Hello everyone, this is what is happening truly to Meghan and Harry's business right now. Oh, what a spectacle it is to watch the grand unraveling of Meghan and Harry's so-called business empire right now. For all their talk of changing the world, making millions, and becoming global superstars, it seems the reality is far less glamorous. Their ventures, which were once hyped as groundbreaking and revolutionary, now appear to be sinking faster than Meghan's approval ratings. As the world looks on, it's almost comical to see how quickly their business dreams are turning into nothing more than a series of costly missteps, questionable deals, and fading relevance. Who could have predicted that turning a royal title into a money-making machine would be this hard? Well, certainly not Meghan and Harry. Is it possible that Harry and Meghan have seen their last example of Netflix and that lucrative business deal? When you think about it, you know that he went down in front of Oprah Winfrey and famously said, Actually, I would never have signed on for it if we didn't need the money because it was cut off financially. This is the one that you are referring to. It is obvious that he is a middle-aged man who has been financially deprived by his father. So it was necessary for him to take action. Eventually, Netflix approached him and he said to himself, Well, why not? Well, as you would guess, things move a little bit rockier a few years down the road with the heart of the Invictus bombing and, of course, the reported impending polo show and, more crucially now, Megan's food show literally not exactly catching fire in the ratings so far. What does the future hold for that particular pair? You are aware that Netflix is a very large company. Nevertheless, doing business with them is not as simple as people believe it to be, because even they struggle with the financial restrictions of producing television. It is the hardest thing ever. The heavyweights of streaming are doing very well. It should come as no surprise that they are getting a foothold in the film industry. This is the reason why a large number of movie theaters have shut down during the past several years. But what you put in front of the public is what the public decides, so it's worth considering. People are able to choose whether they want to watch Hula, Disney, Paramount Plus, or Netflix. In contrast to the situation in the United Kingdom, where the British tax in the form of the BBC TV license charge is very much in effect. So many options to pick from, and all of a sudden, you're spending money, right? Naturally, when Harry and Meghan decided to sign a contract with Netflix, many people assumed that this was going to be a fantastic opportunity. Indeed, they achieved a great deal of success with their documentary series, but it was not anywhere close to the level of success that Victoria Beckham and David Beckham achieved. The fact that Netflix spent all of this money on Harry and Meghan in the mistaken belief that this was going to be a worldwide event, as the famous poster stated, is the single most important factor that has caused the company's eyes to moisten. So what exactly is going on? As you are aware, Ted was made fun of during the award ceremony that took place. That would be Ted, the CEO of Netflix, if you were wondering. In addition, he was made fun of since, of course, it appears that he has given a significant amount of money to a couple of doctors who are, you know, swindlers or whatever you want to call them otherwise. It should come as no surprise that Meghan is adamant that her program will be revolutionary and that a large number of people will want to watch it. That could be considered delusional, since a lot of people think about it. The concept, on the other hand, and I will tell you this first and foremost, is that this is the notion, the fact that Netflix will not just remove Harry and Meghan from the company's roster of employees. What is going to take place is that, in a very planned manner, they will be let go on a case-by-case -case basis. In addition, what I mean by that is that the agreement will not be extended at the enormous sum of money that they received. Are you happy that Netflix is removing Harry and Meghan from its roster? If yes, comment number one. Otherwise, comment number two. In the event that they did not receive all of that money, allow me to convey that in a very clear manner. The answer is no. Whatever it is that they wish to assert, it did not take place. As a result, this takes place. They will say that they are too busy to commit once they have determined 
that the arrangement has expired and there will be a kind of polite media PR attitude that goes something like this. They wish them well. They are free to look into other choices and we will always welcome them into the Netflix family. The picture is clear to you. The situation is that if they continue to pursue and produce more and more of their documentary series, which is, of course, an update of what has occurred since the last one, then it is possible that they will pay for it. Once it has been viewed, however, that will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Therefore, in a strict sense, they will be removed from that relationship when the contract runs out of money. And this is the deal that will simply run out of money. It is this, however, that is of greater significance. Yes, in order to save face on both sides. Because nobody wants to confess that they've booked a bad deal, do they? That is the reason why everybody does it. It is then possible for them to respond. Well, no, what we'll do is, if you have something that we like the look of, and you are ready to share it with us, or maybe make a pilot, then we will continue. It is necessary for us to state that apparently, and this is precisely how the Netflix contract will disappear without much of a fuss or fanfare when it finally occurs. Oh, Netflix really did hit the jackpot, didn't they? All they need to do is release a few behind-the-scenes snippets of the Harkles. Sorry, Meghan and Harry behaving like petulant children. And they'll have the ratings soaring. Just imagine the hilarity of watching two people who once believed they could bring down the entire monarchy with their truth bombs are now floundering around desperate for attention. When Netflix signed them up, it was truly baffling. I mean, really, why? They're not actors. They're not directors. They're certainly not writers. So, what exactly was the draw? It's not like they have some great talent or skills to offer. Oh, wait. Maybe Netflix thought their constant whining and endless victim narratives could be spun into a tragicomedy series. The world could use a laugh. After all, let's face it. The most compelling thing they have produced is the drama they create around themselves daily. If only they could channel that into something people actually want to watch. Maybe, just maybe, they wouldn't be seeing their so-called golden contract hanging by a thread. Besides, don't you worry one bit. Netflix has been given the golden advice on how to squeeze every last drop of value from these two grifters. All they need to do is release the real footage, the behind-the-scenes chaos that exposes the true monsters that Harry and Meghan have become. Imagine the ratings boost. The world is already clued into the fact that they've been confirmed as the worst bosses imaginable, with a trail of former staffers left in their wake, whispering about toxic workplaces, absurd demands, and tantrums that would put a toddler to shame. Can you picture it? The docu-series no one asked for, but everyone would watch. Harry and Meghan. Unfiltered, unscripted, and undeniably unbearable. Netflix could turn this fiasco into their next big hit. After all, who needs real talent or creative ideas when you've got the ultimate reality show right in front of you? Two people who claim to leave the royal life for privacy now tripping over themselves to stay relevant on every media platform possible. And Netflix, desperate for their cut, thought they struck gold but instead got a pair of self-obsessed complainers with delusions of grandeur. Maybe, just maybe, Netflix is starting to realize that the only thing worth airing is the reality of these two royals unraveling. It could be the comedy hit of the year, a masterclass in how not to handle fame, fortune, or family, because let's face it, their endless contradictions and lack of self-awareness are far more entertaining than any scripted content they could ever hope to produce. Maybe Harry will be the first in line with his handout for money when the king passes away. I also think Meghan will be in line when her dad passes for her third of his estate. Whatever is left, she will want it unless her dad has an ironclad will. Then both Harry and Meghan will write nasty books about their fathers and the rest of the royal family to make more money. Especially, those tours will continue great media exposure for a faltering brand. No downside, as King Charles III appears not to be bothered about them. I would expect 
that if King Charles III so wished he could via all his extensive channels and web of leaders, movers, and shakers, hinder poke fun, and humiliate these visits and the faux royal court in the USA, which are demeaning and damaging the British monarchy. Oh, Harry must truly be scraping the bottom of the barrel for cash these days, isn't he? His constant whining has reached a level of pathetic that even the most die-hard fans can barely tolerate anymore. It's almost comical to witness a so-called fake millionaire who somehow manages to make the public feel as if they're more well-off than him. Every other week, it's another pity parade, another dramatic outburst, another round of complaints about how hard his life has been while sipping lattes in his multi-million dollar mansion. Let's get one thing straight. The public has moved on. People are exhausted from listening to this perpetual victim narrative from a man who, by all reasonable accounts, should be grateful for the privileges he was born into. The vast majority of people out there are dealing with real-life problems, like paying their bills, putting food on the table, or ensuring their children get a decent education. Yet here he is, complaining about the lack of royal treatment in his golden cage. What does Harry want? A standing ovation for escaping the British monarchy? A round of applause for managing to suffer through the hardships of a life most people could only dream of? Sorry, but the world's tiniest violin has played its last note for the self-pitying prince. We're tired of hearing about his supposed struggles while he's jet-setting around the globe, trying to sell his truth to anyone who'll listen. Maybe if Harry spent less time complaining about his horrible life and more time reflecting on why the public finds him so utterly tedious, he might actually learn something. But then again, self-awareness doesn't seem to be his strong suit, does it? So, here's a tip. Harry, the next time you feel like complaining about how tough it is being a multi-millionaire, remember, there are people out here in the real world who actually know what real hardship looks like. Save the sob stories for someone who still cares. Because frankly, that list is growing shorter by the day. So that's what I wanted to express in today's video. Do you agree with my ideas and opinions? Now it's your time to share your ideas by writing a comment. Then, don't forget to show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye, and I will see you again.